over the course of time, views about the admissibility of music or sound art in the world of Islam have ranged from complete negation to complete acceptance. While many Muslims have feared the magical, intoxicating powers of music and prohibit it as a tool of the devil, other Muslims have found music inspiring and entirely spiritual. Since the early days of the Prophet Muhammad, Muslim music has progressed from existing solely in a religious form to a now modern mode of cultural expression. In his time, the Prophet Muhammad was antagonistic to music and musicians out of fear that focus on such would take away from devotion to religion. Surprisingly, the Prophet tolerated functional music such as war songs, pilgrimage chants, and public or private festival songs. Even more remarkably, the Prophet himself instituted the Adhan in 623, which is the Islamic call to worship recited by the Muezzin at prescribed times of the day. The root of the word is Adina, meaning to listen to, to be informed about, to hear. With this being said, the Adhan is commonly referred to as the first form of Muslim music. Adhan is called out by Muezzin from the mosque five times a day, traditionally from the minaret, summoning Muslims for mandatory worship. The main purpose behind the multiple loud pronouncements of Adhan in every mosque is to make available to everyone an easily intelligible summary of Islamic belief. In modern times, loudspeakers have been installed on minarets for this purpose. When we asked Arthur Abagar, a recently converted Muslim, how the art of musical Adan assists him in prayer, he said, The Adan, especially when I hear it and digest its meaning, makes me imagine being stripped of all that is of the world. My position, the belongings that I treasure, what I think is important, everything that makes me hold on to my ego melts away until I am nothing before God. Here, give this one a listen. Classical Islamic music time period occurred under the Umayyad Caliphate during the 7th and 8th centuries. The first notable musician of this time period was Ibn Misja, who is widely considered the father of, of Islamic music. Along with being a talented singer and lute player, Misja was recognized for his contributions to the theory of Islamic music. Misja's musical theory development came by way of his travel and his incorporation of four musical elements, such as different modes which is a melodic behavior of the music. During the expansion under the Umayyad Caliphate, elements of conquest began to be incorporated in the style of music. Towards the end of the Umayyad period, Islamic music theory greatly expanded when Greek treatises began to be translated into Arabic. This is the lute instrument mentioned previously, which was interesting as musical instruments were not commonly incorporated into Islamic music styles at this time. This time period was significant in the growth and transformation of Islamic music as styles from different cultures began to be included. By this time, in addition to being ritualistic and ceremonial in nature, Muslim music began to branch out into a more emotional, poetic character. Qawwali music was one of these branches, emotional and spiritual in nature, with its central themes being love, devotion, and longing. In India, Qawwali music found its origin in a man named Amir Khusro 
uh, Dalavi, who in the 13th century formed the basis of Kuali music. In this branch of Muslim music, there were various types. A hamd, or a song of praise for Allah. A nat, or a song of praise for Muhammad. A marsiya, or a song in praise of Ali, or a Sufi saint. Shia only, typically. Uh, Fanafi Allah, translated loosely as Art and God, is a contemporary Canadian Muslim Kuali band that continues this trend, touting their record as having toured throughout America and Canada more than any other Kuali group. Moreover, they have gained fame for having in their band Amina Christi Kuali, the first female tabla player to play at Sufi shrines in India and Pakistan. Currently, Muslims are using music as a creative outlet to express their feelings towards the hardships they face in America and the rest of the world. Mona Haidar, a Syrian-American Muslim, wrote a rap song called Hijabi, wherein she glamorizes wearing a hijab. Her goal is to make Muslim women around the world proud to be wearing a hijab rather than embarrassed or even fearful. She's been extremely successful in her movement. Her video has nearly 4 million views and is seen coverage by major news outlets. What the hair look like? Bet the hair look nice. Don't that make you sweat? Don't that feel too tight? Yo, what your hair look like? Bet your hair look nice. How long your hair is? You need to get your life. You only see Oriental. You steady working that dental. You popping off at the lip and run your mouth like a treadmill. Not your exotic vacation. I'm bored with your fascination. I need that paper, paper, paper if you want education. All around the world, love women. Muslim men are also using music as an outlet, and their song Medina, a popular Muslim duo, remixed the popular song Havana. In this, they show their devotion to God and their passion for prayer and pilgrimage. These two are wildly popular and play live shows for huge audiences around the country. Online, their videos gross over a million views each, and they have nearly 500,000 YouTube subscribers. These two men, Dean Squad, show that music can be informative, creative, religious, and entertaining. As you can see from Mona Haidar and Dean Squad, Muslim music has come a long way in its influences and accomplishments throughout history. Muhammad Dina Huna